Hi, I'm Laurel. I'm a super host with Airbnb, and this is my tiny home at Dibble Creek. The tiny home I built is 39 and a half feet long by eight and a half feet wide. It's on a gooseneck trailer, which I really like because I wanted a, a main sleeping area where you didn't have to climb up a ladder. I have 36 acres here, but the reason I chose this spot was because it has a beautiful view of Mount Lassen and the sunrises are gorgeous. People really seem to appreciate that. I added an outdoor shower because when I've been here in the summer working, we had 28 horses here at one time. During the day when you're working in the heat, I remember thinking, I wish I had an outdoor shower. I could just cool off for a little while. So I added a beautiful, spacious outdoor shower. I created a nice dining area because I wanted an area where people could sit around and relax, have a glass of wine, eat their dinner outside, and bird watch. I have three bird feeders and we get a lot of birds and people really seem to enjoy that. So about two years ago, I had a woman come out who uh, bought a chicken coop from me and she was telling me about Airbnb that she was doing. And I thought, well, I'm retired, I have lots of time, I have lots of property. Uh, maybe that would be something enjoyable. So I started looking into tiny homes and I looked all over the country. Fortunately, I saw an ad on Facebook Marketplace for a tiny home that had been started. It was framed on a trailer and unfinished and it had been sitting in a contractor shop for a couple of years. So that's what I ended up purchasing. And then I was able to finish it myself how I wanted it. The reason I chose a tiny house over a permanent structure was that it didn't need a building permit. <laughs> Plus, I just love them. I always watch the shows and um, I just thought it was cute. And if I ever end up destitute, I have somewhere to live. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> I totally enjoy entertaining people. My mother was a great entertainer. She didn't know how to cook, but she knew how to set a table. <laughs> She knew how to make people comfortable and entertain. And that's just how I grew up. We always had a house full of guests and I always enjoyed it. Hosting an Airbnb has been a wonderful source of extra income. And I enjoy it very much. So I don't feel like I'm working, <laughs> but I'm making money. So the gooseneck hitch is is right under here and I wanted to disguise it because it's not very attractive so I put the lattice around here also I put the um, mini split heat and air under here because I wanted it out of the elements so the lattice puts all of that out of view and then I put the planters the cedar planters uh, around it just to be attractive so another thing I wanted to disguise were the wheels that the trailer sits on. It's a triple axle, so there are three wheels. And I found this cedar on Craigslist. Uh, someone was selling it. They had done a project with their grandson and they had all these scraps left over. So I bought the scraps and my son built this planter for it. And it covers the wheels perfectly. And then over here we have the outdoor shower, which everyone absolutely loves. And it's very private because I have 2,000 acres on this side that's vacant. So the stairs I had built by my son, I wanted stairs that were low profile because I want everybody of all ages to be comfortable. And so I wanted them to be able to hang on to something as they were going in and have plenty of room. And then the awning I put up over the door because I could just imagine people struggling to get in with their suitcases in the rain. So I wanted a nice cover to shield them from rain in the winter. So follow me and I'll show you the inside, but leave your troubles at the door. So welcome to the inside of my tiny home. I put a day bed in for extra sleeping. I put really nice uh, mattresses so that people have a good night's sleep. And the TV 
I know a lot of people want to go and not be bothered by TV and internet and stuff, but so they don't have to use it, but if, if they want to, it's there. It has uh, Netflix and all those, you know, it's a smart TV and it has a satellite dish outside. The mini split heat and air, I thought that was a good spot because it's central and I put the fan here to help circulate the cold or hot air. So trying to decide where to place things was a dilemma. I knew I wanted a bar that would seat at least three people and I put it here so that it would have the view of Mount Lassen. I thought it would be a nice spot to eat, have morning coffee or whatever and see the sunrise. So this was originally part of my front door at my main house. I bought it unfinished, imported, and when I started finishing it, I noticed a hairline crack. And I thought, well, that's okay, it's rustic anyway. I finished it, hung it up, and within a couple of days, that crack started growing, growing, growing. Pretty soon you could see daylight through it. So I had to replace it, and this sat in my garage for about two or three years until I decided to build this. And I thought, wow, that would be a great bar. So my son cut it up for me the size that I wanted. And I love it. It's mahogany and it's all hand carved. I think it's great. So this was a nice spot for the fridge in between the bathroom and the, the end of the bar. And I always have the most important things in the world, coffee <laughs> and cream <laughs> for people. I also have tea bags and hot chocolate and things like that. But it has a nice size freezer, adequate for short stays. I really wanted to have all the same brand appliances, but they didn't make a small cook stove. So I've got an LG this and an LG that. This is a Magic Chef and it's the only thing in here that's propane. So I have outside uh, five gallon propane tanks that it hooks up to. So when I bought this on Facebook Marketplace, it was all framed with uh, redwood. It's all redwood framing, and it had the cedar siding on the outside, but the inside was all uh, just the studs, I guess you call them. When I bought the trailer with the walls framed on it, it was $28,000. And then the complete build with all the furnishings, all the linens, dishes, all that stuff was about 85000 so it isn't paid off yet, but it's, it will be within a few years. So being an Airbnb host, the most surprising thing was how fast I started getting reservations. I put up a Facebook page and I posted the building process because I wanted to start getting bookings before it was actually finished. And I did. And, um, and then ever since then, it's just been on a roll, two years. My record on the Airbnb website, in the last 365 days, 275 have been booked. On average, my income from the tiny home is 3000 a month. So sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, but that would be the average. You know, the Airbnb community, the people who, who rent Airbnb, they're really a nice bunch of people. They're really, there's like a whole little cult, you know, following and they're wonderful. And then I put a dishwasher in too. Um, I love this little drawer dishwasher, which works really well. And I have all the, everything you would need as far as utensils and dishes. I have all nice quality, I think. And I love the mugs. Aren't those cool? See the colors? Aren't those pretty? I just love them. I chose the glass front doors because I knew just being a vacation rental, it wasn't gonna be cluttered with a lot of stuff. And I just thought it would be pretty and it would add to the light, airy feel. Um, the farm sink, I wanted a nice size sink. And so I got this apron farm sink, which I've been very happy with. I had this tile, the colored tile was all left over from other projects I had done at my main house. And then all I had to do was purchase the white subway tile to go with it. This is a ladder that goes up to the loft. You pull it out like this and like that. And if you're not claustrophobic, then you climb up there <laughs> and you feel like you're sleeping in a tent or a fort. 
and kids love it. That's a queen size bed up there. So the house actually can sleep five people comfortably. And then I had this extra space I wasn't quite sure what to do with, so we just made this little tiny pantry, which has two different types of coffee makers, either a drip or a French press, and it has an electric teapot, it has a toaster. So because of the wheel wells, things had to be built up. So the refrigerator needed to be built up. So in this drawer, we have pots and pans. And in this drawer, we have the lids. <laughs> and there are a couple more drawers that have a lot of miscellaneous things in them. I wanted the bathroom to be good size because when you're traveling, I think it, good beds and good bathrooms are important. So I made the shower as large as possible. And I also uh, had enough tile left over from my home projects to add it to the shower. And I just love it. I think it's turned out beautiful. I have a, a vessel, a glass vessel sink here and enough counter space that you can actually put your shaving cream, your razor, your toothbrush, things on it, not just a pedestal sink where nowhere there isn't anywhere to put anything. And the sliding barn door is a dark mahogany. And it slides so smoothly. And I was able to find towels that matched the colors of the tile, which I was so happy about. So on this side of the wall, there's a flush toilet and a nice size window. And I'm constantly trying to think of ways to make it more comfortable and more pleasurable for people. So I recently added bathrobes and they seem to like them especially when they're using the outdoor shower. Then they can put on a bathrobe to come back in. I have pots, pans, you know, everything basic. But if someone needs something else that isn't in here, they can just ask me for it and I'll bring it over. Because I don't want to clutter the place up with things people don't need. My residence where I live is very close. I think I walked it off one time and it was 50 steps. <laughs> and that side of my house, I don't have any windows. So it's very private over here. But if you need anything, I'm only 50 steps away. <laughs> yeah, I've actually owned two art galleries, so I'm, I'm crazy about art. This one is done by my son who also lives on my property. He's an artist. He's pretty well known nationally and his name is Jamie Means. Uh, he works in colored pencil and graphite. This is his second daughter and one of our colts that we had. And there's another one in the bathroom called The Latest Joke, which was one of my favorites. So I really liked that this was already framed when I bought it for the door on the side and I put in the glass door just because the view is so beautiful and it's very private out here, so you don't really need anything on it. More bathrobes. <laughs> so the main sleeping area is, is up just four steps, which is manageable by most, and it's up over the gooseneck. So I had these two closets put in. This one is just for hanging clothes and extra blankets and throws. This one I had plumbed for an all-in-one washer and dryer, but I've never had it installed. So it has a luggage rack and the vacuum cleaner and the Swiffer. And over here, there's a light switch on the wall for the two lights on either side of the bed. And there's also a switch at the bottom of the stairs so you don't have to get up again. So I put a queen size bed in here. And because of the bay windows, it gives a little bit more room for the bed. And I've had several compliments on the bed and the linens. People have told me what a comfortable bed it is and have actually asked me where I bought my linens. So I'll tell you, I bought them at Macy's <laughs> and they're Pima cotton. And I always use white instead of colored linens. I don't know why, but it just feels more professional to me to have white linen. 
Oh, and I wanted to point out the height in this room is six feet, seven inches. So pretty much anyone can stand up. I have the most fabulous reviews. I have had the best, the best guests and they just leave really wonderful reviews. And they always mention the tiny details, which to me, I don't really notice. It's just the way I am. But they notice the details. And uh, so I'm glad people appreciate it. It's part of that great Airbnb community. They just, uh, I don't know, they've just been wonderful people to get to know. for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Patreon for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.